Advanced Financial Accounting PowerPoint Presentation. In this presentation, we will discuss forward exchange contracts. Get ready to account with Advanced Financial Accounting. Forward exchange contracts. Now we're going to go over some of the components of the forward exchange contracts here. We'll go into them in a lot more detail as we work through practice problems related to the forward exchange contracts. But just to visualize the basic kind of layout of a forward exchange contract as you think about these items, and they'll be a lot more concrete once we look at practice problems. We are basically have a, a setup where we're going to be working with a bank or a dealer, typically a bank, and we're going to be setting up a forward exchange contract, which is basically going to say, we have a receivable and a payable on the books at this point in time. And we're either going to put the receivable or the payable that is going to be due to us or something that we will pay in foreign currency at the end of the time period. Whereas the other side, the receivable or the payable, the other side that's not in foreign currency will be in U.S. dollars. In other words, we'll, we will determine the amount that, we'll, that we're talking about. And then we'll use an exchange rate, which we'll talk a little bit more about the exchange rate that we will use to value it in today's dollars. We'll put either the receivable or the payable in U.S. dollars and either the receivable or the payable in foreign dollars as of this point in time. And then as time changes, as the rate of the foreign currency ch changes, then that could result in the difference between, you know, what we thought the value would be. Uh, at the point in time we went into the forward contract between the U.S. dollar and the foreign currency, as that difference changes over time, that could result in basically a gain or loss. So in other words, if you had a speculative forward contract, speculation only, then you would be speculating on whether or not the, the future rate or the foreign currency is going to get weaker or is it going to get stronger. And then you would set up basically your forward contract one way or the other to have either the a receivable or the payable in foreign currency in order to to take advantage of what your predictive uh, what you're predicting about the future strength or weakness of the foreign currency ba uh, differences to the current rates that are on the book so that's going to be the basic scenario now you could set up a forward contract for just predictive purposes only just speculative purposes only to see if you can have a gain if you think a currency is going to get weaker or stronger or you could set up the foreign currency as some kind of hedge. And so, for example, if you purchase something uh, in foreign currency, if you purchase something and you have a payable on the books that now you're going to pay in some foreign currency, well, now the payable is on the books and, and you're going to pay it in the future. And you have, you have a bit of a risk there because it's possible that the foreign currency uh, gets stronger. Like the foreign currency gets stronger to the U.S. dollar. It's worth more compared to the U.S. dollar by the time you pay it. And if that were the case, then you would owe more money basically in U.S. dollar terms. So you have this kind of risk that the, that the currency, the foreign currency is going to get stronger. How could you, how could you basically hedge against that or, or at least counteract that to some degree? Well, you could put a forward contract on there where you have the receivable that you're going to get in foreign currency and the payable in dollars. And if that were, if that were the case, now you'd have a receivable on the books that you're going to get in foreign currency and a payable that you're going to pay in foreign currency and the two gains and losses between them should be going opposite directions and to some degree kind of net each other out. That's kind of like the basic overview. Now, when we set up a forward contract that's for speculative purposes versus a hedge and whatnot, they can, they can be a little bit different in terms of the accounting. So we'll have to go through scenarios and that's the best way to take a look at them. But basically the forward contract is going to be set up through a, deal, a dealer, usually the bank. They can be customized to meet the contracting company's terms and specific needs. So if we, if we basically have a, a payable on the books that we know is going to have a certain term, we could set up the forward contract. It could be really flexible, very flexible for us to set up to cover that same kind of time period and hopefully give us some kind of counterbalance against what's going to happen or what could possibly happen with the risk of the foreign currency changed on, on the payable that we have on the books in that case. So no, no margin deposit is generally required because, because note what's happening here is, is usually if you're working with the bank, you're basically saying, look, I'm going to put a receivable and a payable on the books at this point in time, based on what we think the future value will be. And so, so typically there's no deposit at that point in time. Because at the end, because there's no money exchanging hands, really, right? It's just a speculative thing to the bank. At the end of the at the end of the time period, then uh, then they'll settle it at the end of the time period, and 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 so no need so need to complete with 
either the underlines future delivery or net cash settlement, right? So at the end of the time period, typically in that type of scenario, you would then you would then settle it at the end of the time period. And that means you would either receive the foreign currency from the bank or be paying in foreign currency and receive either the dollars or be paying the dollars at the end of the time period. Okay, so the basic rule of fair value for accounting for the forward exchange contracts. Changes in the fair value will be recognized in the accounts. So typically, uh, you know, if you have the receivable, for example, in foreign currency, the changes in the fair value will typically be recognized on, on the balance sheet because what's going to happen is you're going to value it at the point in time that you put it on the books and then it could change in the future because the foreign currency rates will change in relation to the dollar and you're going to change the receivable value typically uh, in relation to the, to the new rates or the closest rates you have. However, the specific accounting for change depends on the purpose of the hedge. So there will be differences depending on why we're using the forward contract. Are we using it purely for speculative reasons? Are we using it as a hedge? And then what type of hedge are we using it for? The accounting will change a bit on that. So we'll have scenarios to take a look at those differences. The general rule is to use the forward exchange rate to value the forward contract. So this is the one component that's fairly consistent through all the scenarios is when you have the forward contract if you go to the bank and say hey i want a forward contract i want it to last 180 days and i want to have a receivable in foreign currency and i want to have the payable in dollars right and that's so you got a receivable and a payable 180 days from now i want you to give me foreign currency and i'll pay you dollars well what kind of what kind of rate should should you have should you use for the foreign currency uh, the question is normally we use the spot rate, but that would be for today's dollars, right? That would be us thinking today and we, this is out in the future. So typically the banks, what the bank's going to do is speculate as to what they think the rate will be 180 days from now at the point in time that you, that this thing's going to end. Nobody knows what that is. It's just the best guess. It's a market guess that, that the bank has, that the bank's going to provide there. And so you'll use the, the speculative rate or the forward exchange rate, which is speculating what the rate exchange rate will be 180 days from now, which will differ from the spot rate, which you can currently change the dollars for. And so that's, that's going to be one of the differences that we'll have in this. We're not going to be using the spot rate. We're using, we're using the speculative rate or the forward exchange rate for the forward exchange contracts because we're speculating to the termination of the contract at the point in time that we'll actually pay or receive uh, in, in the foreign currency.